We are receiving many questions in response to our myth busting video about rosemary oil. So here's why you shouldn't be putting rosemary oil on your scalp. This video was referring to claims made in many TikTok videos that state that one, rosemary oil treats all types of hair loss and two, grows an extraordinary amount of hair in a very short space of time. Before we dive in, we'll first clear up some definitions. When we refer to rosemary pure essential oil, we are referring to the concentrated plant extracts. When we refer to oil, we are talking about carrier oils, such as jojoba, castor, grapeseed, etc. When pure essential oil is mixed in the correct percentage and with the correct carrier oil, it's able to exhibit many great properties. When we refer to hair growth, we are talking about the amount your hair grows before it cycles out. This is the transition from the growing phase to the shedding phase. So let's talk about the claims of rosemary hair oil. Many posts promoting rosemary hair oil suggest that it's a cure for all types of hair loss. The majority of these claims are anecdotal and not based on scientific trials. But let's talk about the study people often refer to. The trial that most people and blogs refer to was a randomised comparative trial. A randomised comparative trial is where the effects of a health product is tested and compared to an alternative. Usually there is a control group in these trials in order to examine the placebo effect. If they had included this in the trial, they would have individuals using a solution that was water, for instance. The issue with this trial is that there was no control group and therefore the placebo effect was not accounted for. This makes it very difficult to assess its true outcome and which factor actually induced the stimulating effect. The trial compared 2% minoxidil and rosemary oil, which was massaged into the scalp twice a day. Both groups performed massage, which in fact could have been the stimulating effect in the trial. And we know that it has been proven that scalp massage stimulates blood to the follicle, which can stimulate hair growth. So the massage element of the trial could have had the most effect, but then we don't know this because there was no control group. The trial had minor results after six months, and these do not match the extraordinary results that are being shown on TikTok. Yes, there was hair growth, but there was no documented results of reversing of hair follicle miniaturization. Hair follicle miniaturization, which is the shrinking of the hair follicle and the thinning of the hair shaft, which is the most important factor in treating male or female pattern hair loss. Another problem with this trial is there was no further follow-up beyond six months, and therefore we don't know the long-term effects of this treatment. Now let's clear up some stuff about rosemary oil. We agree that pure rosemary essential oil has many amazing properties, one being microcapillary perfusion. Microcapillary perfusion is the passage of fluid through the circulatory system to its target tissue. However, if the essential oil is not mixed with the correct percentage or in the white oil base, carrier oil, it will not be able to exhibit microcapillary perfusion, as in it will not be able to reach the target tissue. The issue today is that there are many people selling these oil blends and it is getting increasingly hard to know if they are mixed to the correct percentage and using high quality ingredients. While many people know that you need to dilute rosemary with pure essential oil, there are still some people that are applying the undiluted pure rosemary essential oil on their scalp. This is very concerning and potentially damaging to the scalp. Additionally, we do not actually need to apply oils on our scalps, as we all produce our own natural lubricant called sebum. For some, applying oil has no detrimental effect, but for others, it does. We got a lot of questions from people suffering from alopecia. The term alopecia simply means hair loss. There are many different types of alopecia, which all have different prognoses. Some are temporary and some are chronic. One of these temporary hair loss conditions is called telogen effluvium. This is a reflected type of hair loss that can be caused by stress, illness, medication, crash dieting, to name but a few. Often this type of hair loss rectifies itself. For some, the stress of the hair loss makes it worse. Many people benefit from the placebo effect from just doing something to address the issue. An example of chronic hair loss is a condition called androgenic alopecia. This hair loss condition is slow and progressive and leads to miniaturization of the hair follicle and is also known as male and female pattern hair loss. Androgenic alopecia requires proper specialist treatment to slow down or prevent permanent hair loss. There have been no studies which prove that rosemary oil will stop the process of miniaturization and therefore is not a cure for androgenic alopecia. To know whether something is chronic or temporary hair loss, here are a couple of guidelines. Chronic conditions are defined broadly as conditions that last one year or more and require ongoing medical attention. Temporary hair loss, as it suggests, is not permanent. This type of hair loss will often recover on its own and can take up to six months to fully recover. If you are experiencing worrying hair loss, do seek the advice from a qualified trichologist or your medical practitioner. 
Some of these homemade remedies may aggravate your symptoms and cause you more harm than good. Let's talk a bit about hair growth. It's important to know that the amount our hair grows is directly linked to our genetic growth rate. Our genetic growth rate is predetermined and there is nothing we can do to change this. The health and length of our hair can be either helped or damaged by what we physically do to it on a daily basis. Things like chemical treatments, excessive use of heat, frequent pulling of the hair and so on can all contribute to the levels of damage in your hair and therefore also your hair growth. Your hair health and growth may also be impacted by what is going on inside you, such as poor diet, stress, illness and hormone changes, such as those experienced during puberty, pre and post pregnancy and menopause. When we start to pay attention to our hair and start treating it and ourselves gently and with patience and understanding, what can happen is we start to get length retention. This can appear as an increase in our growth rate. Remember, breakage will give the appearance of slow or no growth. Once it starts to recover and the hair becomes healthy, it can give the appearance of a longer, faster growth cycle. We're not saying that everyone who is experiencing hair loss should immediately go to get a prescription from their doctor. We are saying that there are many steps you can take before you start putting things on your scalp that someone online has said was a good idea. There are many causes for hair loss and it is incredibly individual as to why it happens. We therefore don't think it is a good idea to apply the one size fits all rule, even if it is a natural remedy. Some general advice for maintaining healthy hair and length retention. One, limit excessive heat on your hair, blow dryer, straighteners and tongs. Two, limit chemical treatments. Three, limit excessive force on your hair, i.e. pulling and tugging. Four, protect your hair using heat protective products before using any heat, sleeping with a bonnet or on a satin pillowcase, and avoid harsh products. Five, massage your scalp when in the shower or as part of your self-care regime. The massaging will bring blood to the surface which can promote healthy hair follicles. Another important thing to consider is to tackle any stress you may be experiencing. We know from a vast amount of research that stress causes inflammation in the body and can therefore attribute to hair and scalp issues. In the field of trichology, we have a commitment to follow scientific evidence with supported data. If rosemary oil could cure all hair loss conditions and scalp issues, there would be no hair loss conditions or scalp issues today. We are not saying that rosemary oil is in itself a bad ingredient to use. We are saying that by looking at both the scientific research and the 30 years of experience of working in this field, it does not cure hair loss conditions and it is not the miracle ingredient that increases hair growth. When formulated and used correctly, products that have pure essential oil of rosemary in them can exhibit anti-inflammatory properties, which is great, but they can also cause irritation, which can increase inflammation. So if you are benefiting from using a good quality, well-formulated rosemary oil blend, continue to do so. If you have tried it and it is not working to solve the issues you are having, seek professional advice.